I'm Dustin Saldariaga, an immigration lawyer with Scott Legal PC in New York City. In this video, we're continuing our series on the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Visa and discussing a common question among EB-5 applicants. When does the investment in the EB-5 business need to be complete? And can you submit the EB-5 application before the full amount of the investment has been made? At the heart of this question is a new EB-5 law that was passed in 2022, which fundamentally changed a number of requirements for the EB-5 visa, including when the investment needs to be made. Before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe. We'll keep you updated on our firm's most current and trustworthy information about U.S. immigration, including options to visit, work, or live in the United States. The EB-5 Immigrant Investor Visa currently requires an investment amount of either $800,000 or $1,050,000 into the EB-5 business. Given the large required investment, it's no surprise that EB-5 applicants want to know whether they need to invest the full amount before the EB-5 application is submitted, or if they can spread the investment out over time. Now, the answer to this question depends on when you filed your EB-5 application. By that, I mean the form I-526. If you filed your application on or after March 15th, 2022, your options for spreading your EB-5 investment out over time are extremely limited since the new law, among other things, prohibited the use of debt arrangements, such as promissory notes, between the applicant and the EB-5 business. If you filed before March 15th, 2022, the government allowed you to use certain debt arrangements, like a promissory note, which would allow the investment to happen over time. Why March 15th, 2022? Because that's the date President Biden signed into law the EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act, which fundamentally changed the answer to when the investment needs to be made. Even though the law changed on March 15th, 2022, USCIS has made clear that for applications filed before that date, it will apply the rules and requirements that applied before the new law was passed. In other words, the new requirements under the EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act do not retroactively apply to applications that were filed before that law was passed on March 15th, 2022. So let's start by taking a look at the rule that applies to applications filed before March 15th, 2022. For applications filed before this date, the brief answer is that it is possible to make the investment after the date the EB-5 application was submitted. To quote the regulations that apply to applications filed before March 2022, the EB-5 applicant can be actively in the process of investing at the time the application is submitted. Now, there were a number of things you had to keep in mind if you intended to make the full investment amount after filing the EB-5 application before March of 2022. Critically, you needed to show a real commitment to invest the required amount. A simple promise that you would pay the amount wasn't enough. Among other things, you had to show that your promise to invest in the EB-5 business was legally binding and that you committed your assets to that commitment. Meaning that if you failed to follow through on the promise, the EB-5 business could and would seize your assets, your personal assets, in order to get the promised funds. To satisfy these requirements, an instrument like a promissory note or an escrow agreement could be used. Later in this video, we'll look at the specific requirements that applied to each and several pitfalls that you had to be aware of for each option. But before that, what do we even mean when we refer to the EB-5 filing date? An EB-5 application has several steps. The first step in an EB-5 application is to file the form I-526, called the Immigrant Petition by a Standalone Investor. The form I-526 starts the process, and it includes details about the applicant, the EB-5 project, the investment, and other details. The second step in the process is to apply for the actual immigrant visa, or green card, which is done by filing the form I-485, if you're inside the United States, or by filing the DS-260 if you're applying at a consulate. Once that's approved, you receive conditional lawful permanent resident status. That's conditional lawful permanent resident status, not permanent permanent resident status. After two years of conditional LPR status, you would submit an I-829 application to remove the conditions on your status, which, once approved, 
would grant you unconditional permanent resident status. If this sounds like a long process, it's because it is. The government estimates that it takes five years for USCIS to process the I-526, which is just step one. It can also take several years for USCIS to process the I-829 to simply remove the conditions on lawful permanent resident status. In the face of these extensive delays, our firm has helped a number of clients expedite their cases by filing lawsuits against the government, which may be an option worth considering. If you're interested, take a minute to check out our videos on this option called a mandamus lawsuit. But let's put lawsuits aside and get back to the question at hand. In that long EB-5 process, before March of 2022, when did the investment need to be made? If the applicant was using an escrow agreement, the funds needed to be immediately and irrevocably released once the applicant was granted conditional resident status. It's critical to understand that the escrow agreement could only be contingent on the applicant entering the US as a conditional permanent resident or being granted an adjustment of status, both of which would occur after the I-526 was approved. If there were any other contingencies in the escrow agreement, the funds in escrow would not be considered toward the required investment amount. There were several other requirements that the applicant needed to follow if they used an escrow agreement. At the time the I-526 was filed, the applicant needed to provide the fully executed escrow agreements. They also needed to show that the escrow agent actually received the amount of capital that would be released once conditional permanent resident status was granted. When USCIS adjudicated the Form I-829, the application to remove conditions from the applicant's permanent resident status, USCIS would require evidence showing that the funds that were held in escrow were released and held in the EB-5 business. Now, can the escrow account be held abroad? Again, we're talking about applications filed before March 15, 2022. Funds can be held abroad in escrow, but it's generally recommended that the escrowed funds be held in the United States in order to avoid fluctuations in currency. Those fluctuations could bring the amount held in escrow below the required investment amount. So that's the escrow agreement. Let's now turn to a promissory note. Again, promissory notes are only allowed if the EB-5 application was filed before March 15th, 2022. If the applicant made a binding promise to commit funds to the business through a promissory note, the government requires that the full amount of the required investment needs to be made before the two-year conditional residency period ends. Don't assume that USCIS takes into account the extensive delays in processing these applications though. USCIS has suggested that the promissory note must be payable no later than two years from the date the I-526 is submitted. As with the escrow agreement, there are a number of requirements that would apply to anyone who used a promissory note before March 15th, 2022. In the initial application, the applicant needed to show that they personally had a legitimate, legally binding obligation requiring them to pay the amount promised. They needed to have primary responsibility to pay the note. The applicant also had to submit evidence proving that they have the ability to pay the business the amount promised and that their assets adequately secured the promissory note. The assets that secured the promissory note must be owned by the applicant and cannot include assets of the EB-5 business. The applicant must prove that the security interest was perfected and that the assets could actually be seized by the business. Also, the applicant needed to understand that the government will only count the value of indebtedness to the business up to the fair market value of the applicant's assets that secured the debt. In other words, if the applicant promised to transfer a million dollars to the business, but the assets that secured that debt only had a fair market value of $500,000, the government would only consider the value of the debt to be $500,000. Now, even if you submitted your EB-5 application before March 15th, 2022, extending your investment over time through the use of a promissory note or other debt arrangement has always been risky. To better understand the risks and pitfalls of using a promissory note, two cases are especially informative, matter of Xiong and matter of Izumi. 
We'll link to both cases below. In matter of Xiong, an EB-5 applicant promised to pay the EB-5 business $500,000, which was the required investment amount at the time. But the applicant did not want to pay this amount all at once. Instead, he planned to pay the business $50,000 initially, then to pay $50,000 after the EB-5 visa was approved, $200,000 one year after he entered the United States on the EB-5 visa, and a final $200,000 before the application to remove the conditions on his permanent resident status was approved. Unfortunately, Xiong's application ran into a number of problems. First, the government found that he didn't specify what assets secured the promissory note. He also didn't prove that he actually owned the assets. The government also took issue with the fact that the assets were located outside the United States. The government wasn't convinced that the EB-5 business would be able to seize the assets held abroad if the applicant failed to pay the promissory note. Even if the business could seize the assets, the government said that this would be expensive to do so the full value of the assets should not be counted. Finally, the government raised a concern that should give anyone who considered a promissory note even more pause. They said that the value of a promissory note depends on its present value. Since a dollar received tomorrow is worth less than a dollar received today, the value of a promissory note, which is paid in the future, must be discounted. By how much, the decision doesn't say. Instead, it said that Xiong had not provided sufficient evidence of the present value of his promissory note. The applicant in matter of Izumi faced similar scrutiny on his promissory note. In spite of this, the decision in matter of Izumi, like in matter of Xiong, did acknowledge that at the time, a promissory note could count as capital toward the EB-5 investment, if the issues highlighted in these cases are addressed. Again, this only applies to EB-5 applications filed before March 15th, 2022. So what about EB-5 applications filed on or after March 15th, 2022? The EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act that was signed into law on March 15th, 2022 fundamentally changed when the EB-5 investment must be completed. That law and the regulations that followed from it removed the EB-5 applicant's ability to be actively in the process of investing the required amount of capital at the time the 4I-526 is submitted or the I-829 is adjudicated. Now, the applicant must show that he or she is not in the process of investing, but has actually invested the required amount. The new law also explicitly changed the definition of what funds can be invested into the EB-5 business by excluding money invested in exchange for a debt arrangement between the applicant and the EB-5 company. This means that as of March 15th, 2022, promissory notes can no longer be used to satisfy the EB-5 investment amount. Escrow agreements are still permitted under the new law, and the requirements for the escrow agreement would still apply. Specifically, the escrowed funds must be immediately and irrevocably released once the applicant is granted conditional resident status, and ideally, those funds would be held in escrow in the United States. The escrow agreement can only be contingent on the applicant entering the U.S. as a conditional permanent resident or being granted an adjustment of status, and the applicant must provide with the I-526 the fully executed escrow agreement and must show that the escrow agent actually received the amount of capital that will be released once the conditional permanent resident status is granted. When USCIS adjudicates the form I-829, the application to remove conditions, USCIS will require evidence showing that the funds that were held in escrow were released and held in the EB-5 business. As the decisions in Matter of Xiong and Matter of Izumi show, the use of promissory notes and other debt arrangements between the EB-5 applicant and the EB-5 business have always been fraught with risk. In light of the EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act passed in 2022, the government has now made it explicit that such debt arrangements will no longer be accepted for applications submitted on or after March 15th, 2022. For applications filed before March 15th, 2022, it's best to reduce to the extent possible any doubt that the government might have as to whether the applicant's investment will actually lead to the creation of jobs, which is a fundamental requirement of the EB-5 program. By ensuring that the investment requirement is satisfied before the I-526 is submitted, the applicant reduces the odds that they'll receive a decision or an RFE years into the application process, stating that the government does not accept the escrow agreement 
or the terms of the promissory note. We hope this video about the timing of the EB-5 investment was helpful. If it was, please click the like and subscribe buttons to stay updated on future videos about visa options and travel to the US. Thank you for watching.